What makes a video game special? It could be a combination of a lot of things. The voice acting is surreal and involving. The script and storytelling is compelling. But the driving factor for many is the soundtrack, and most players don't even know it. The music in video games creates emotion from players and fully immerses them in the game by using instrumentation, timbre, and tempo. So let's talk about instrumentation. Instrumentation sets the scene. When you're in an intense action sequence, you don't expect a lyrical operatic solo from the clarinet. Instead, you're ready for a heavy percussion and full brass sound exploding your ears. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you get the point. In contrast, when you're looking at a romantic scene, you expect a little amount of instrumentation so you can really hear the words said, and sometimes a little bit of music can go a long way. But let's get a bit more specific. So I did a poll and about 700 people voted on their favorite game. So we're going to dive into two of the top three chosen and see what kind of music instrumentation we find within them. The number one game with 194 votes was The Elder Scrolls. Now this is a franchise, but we're specifically going to look at Skyrim for this example. Skyrim is an open world action adventure RPG game and it's not surprising that it's number one in the polls. You can create your own character, there's dragons, political warfare, magic, side quests, werewolves, skill trees, did I mention dragons? I digress. But how do you enter this world? This is how. The music in the intro tells the whole story. This is an epic tale of an adventurer, the Dovahkiin, the last of the Dragonborn, who must hone his powers, ally with the Stormcloaks or the Imperials to defeat the evil- Spoilers! Back to instrumentation. For this tale, they use a full men's choir and orchestra to match the epic energy of the story. Now, I could talk all day about how I see the music, but let's see what kind of message this song gives to someone who's never played Skyrim before. Without context, what kind of game would you think this song belonged to? Uh, based on the way that this song starts off pretty slow and then builds up and, you know, me pretty excited, I would say that this would probably be a song for an adventure game or an action game. Like, if you place this song in some kind of game where you're just as your playing as your character, strolling across some open land, that uh, perfect song for uh, going through an adventure and uh, beating whatever quest you have to beat. So, yeah, definitely say an adventure game. So he is correct. It is an adventure game. But I want to dive into the first thing he mentioned. It starts slow and it builds up. And I didn't even realize it until we talked about it, but the instrumentation directly imitates the storyline. It starts with one bass drum, and each instrument added is like a new quest or a new person that you meet, until eventually you have an entire world or an orchestra. It's telling an entire story just through the instrumentation alone. The third favorite game of the poll was Legend of Zelda, and we're specifically going to look at Ocarina of Time to talk about timbre. So timbre is defined as the quality of musical sound, and it directly affects the emotion the composer wants to convey. To show what I mean, let's go to another interview where I show some examples and get their reaction. So what kind of vibe do you get from that? Um, it sounds very upbeat. Like, it's like during the day, kind of walking around kind of sound, but it also sounds very adventurous, like you're on a ta like you're on a mission to do something. So, it makes you feel upbeat and productive. Alright, so now, how does this make you feel? a little like scary compared to the last one it it's a little bit uncomfortable it feels a little bit more eerie for some reason so it's very obvious that when you lower the pitch it sounded a little creepy and that's because when you're walking around a nice bright green field you want bright music but you can't get the brightness without the correct instrumentation so don't think that the two don't go hand in hand now if you're still not getting the memo let's go to god of war So what kind of vibe does that give you? It sounds like a medieval kind of game. So something more like stoic and old fashioned. It gives me the same kind of feeling as like maybe a Skyrim game. But why? It's simple. Because of the low male chant. The bass drum moving in a march style and it's all low and dark. Imagine if I were to raise the pitch of this up an octave. Now I'm not going to do it because it'll sound gross. Ugh. 
but if it actually was to be performed in that range, it gives off more of a mystical adventure and it fills you with wonder, whereas the original is epic, mythological, and dreadful. The range has a lot of effect on the mood that it gives to the player. So the last thing that affects the way players feel in a game is tempo. Tempo is the driving force for what the composer wants the player to feel because it's the first thing they notice. It's common knowledge that action sequences have high paced music to match the intensity of the scene to really get your heart pumping. A perfect example of this is in Halo 3. At the end of the game, you have to escape the planet and your warthog before it collapses. There's aliens surrounding you as bombs go off and the floor is falling beneath you and you finally have to jump onto your ship at the end and the song definitely portrays that. It utilizes everything we've talked about so far. It uses an entire orchestra to emphasize the importance. The timbre is mid to low range to show that this is life or death. And the constant fast paced percussion just gets your heart pumping. As soon as you turn this uh, this uh, song on, I kind of got chills down my spine about uh, and memories of us driving down uh, crazy obstacles and aliens shooting at us while we tried to do uh, an her a heroic and almost impossible mission. So uh, yeah, this definitely brought me some uh, visual memories pretty much as soon as I heard the beginning of this song. To contrast the fast upbeat music, let's go to a more sad or serious moment in the same game. Notice how it's slow. There's no percussion because they don't want to distract you with rhythm. In these more serious scenes, they need swells of chords and elongated notes. It's pretty easy to grasp. If you want something sad or somber, make it slow. And if you want something action-y, is that a word? Make it faster. Case in point. Composers change the instrumentation and use different timbre and tempos to portray various emotions within video game soundtracks. The instrumentation sets the scene. Changing the number of instrumentation directly impacts the emotion portrayed for the player. The timbre of the instruments determines the atmosphere of the game, so if the sound is low and deep, you get an epic and mythological feeling, whereas if it's higher and light, you would get a bubbly or happy feeling. Tempo is the first thing you notice musically and it instantly lets the player know what's going to happen. If the tempo is starting to increase then the player knows danger is approaching. And if it's slow then it usually indicates a sad or serious mood. Composers use all three interchangeably to draw out the emotion of the players and fully immerse them in the game. That is what makes a video game special. <laughs>